All right, so I'm working in the dark, but I've got a torch and hopefully this film will come out okay in when, when you're watching it. I've made this film before and um, I watched it back and I thought I could do uh, maybe a better version. So, first things first, I've got my soap, it's already uh, massaged into the washer. One of the most important things to have. This is your soap regulator, so this is your, um, this is my working setup. This is what gives you the best ability to get the job done uh, the, 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 the best way. It turns normal window cleaners into very good window cleaners straight away. Because it gives that glide, which uh, is very important for window cleaners who are working on a different level. So. First of all, let's talk about straight pulls. Uh, I don't do straight pulls. It's not something that I want to be doing in my day-to-day -day work, so I don't do them. Why not? Because what it does is it creates a lot of detail cloth work, and I don't use a detail, detail cloth. Um, I want my tool and my ability to do the job 100%. The, the customer, if they wanted to, could do straight pulls, and I need to be, well, I think I need to be working on a higher level than what a cust my customer could do if they really wanted to clean the windows. Um, so what I'm going to do is work on low-level windows, but I'm going to adapt my squeegee to um, the, the correct angle so I can get the job done as if these windows were first floor uh, level windows. Right, so I've talked about why I don't do straight pulls. So what do I do? So what I do um, on narrow windows, I'm gonna, all I'm going to talk about in this video is narrow windows and windows that are more regular size, wider than high, and um, we're also not going to talk about being ambidextrous. I'm just talking about the actual technique being ambidextrous is something um, that pretty much nobody else does, so there's no point talking about something that no one else will do. But technique is something that is always doable. Uh, being ambidextrous is not is not doable for most people. So we don't bother talking about that. We, we're going to talk about how I fan this window and how I fan this window. Remember, I said fan. I don't do straight pulls. So, what do I do? I cut in and I just come down very gently, very accurately, and I come up and over, a bit like a rainbow, up and over. This is how I typically fan a window when I'm face on to a pane of glass. So we do it again. I'm swapping sides, but that's because that's what I do after every go I, I swap size but we're not interested in that on this video so it's up and over up and over there's no erratic moves it's just nice and smooth and um, if I make a mistake I can go back over and fix any mistake that I'm making and I'm always aiming for 100% result when you're doing straight pulls you'll never get 100% so when I work on residential or commercial work, it's always 100% for me. So, what don't I do? So I don't do big turns like this, erratic turns, which is gonna cause uh, twist and turn marks and all sorts of mayhem. There are window cleaners that do work like that, even in the hand but it's too exaggerated um, and we're just making your work harder when um, you should be making your work easier for you but doing it with precision and skill in my opinion well that's what I do so we're just talking about how I do things so I have to change the way I work when um, something interrupts my um, 
average daily work. So let, let, this window here is a nice, easy, sealless frame to work on. I've got no issues of the rubber lifting up over a flat laying seal, but sometimes I do have to work on flat laying seals. And sometimes I'm not working uh, straight on onto a um, facing the glass. And when you're working with a pole, you're a lot more restricted. So I have to change. I can't change the tool. The tool will, can only do what it can do. So what I've got to do is I've got to change how I work. And that is what window cleaning should be all about. Adapt to your working environment. So first of all, I'm going to talk about working at a ridiculous angle. So what happens when you're working at a ridiculous angle? I've now got less maneuverability on the channel because I can't turn my channel any further than this. I can turn it as much as I want this side, but it won't turn any further than this. But when I'm face on, I can have the ability of moving around freely. So I'm restricted. So if I'm restricted, I have to change my way of working. Otherwise, I'm gonna cause myself lines and smears and smudges. So this is what I do. I come down one side, that side's done. You notice that the squeegee is just over halfway of the of the uh, window, which is a nice size to work at. I've got maneuverability. And now what I do is I now fan on the soapy side and just go over to the dry side a little bit, but I don't bother touching that other side of the edge, which I've took out because that's all done. And now I'm able to fan pretty easily compared to um, how I was because I don't have to worry about taking out both sides. I've already took out this side with one swoop. So let's do that again. I'll work at even a tighter angle to make it even more difficult. So um, let's work over here. So I'll take out, I'll take out this. And now I'm just gonna, oh, this is how difficult it is now. So I'm just gonna have to, the best of my ability, to just try and get the fan in motion just good, as good as I can get it. It's very restrictive. And what I tend to do is go over higher on the way back. I can't turn here. So that's gonna cause me, a, when I'm doing, doing this movement, it's gonna cause me a, a line. So I come back over and I take out the lines and the smudges that I could have possibly have made. So I'm going back over like this. This is very restrictive pile work. Now most people will say, well, look how long that's taking you. Why not just do straight pulls? Well, I don't want to do straight pulls. I want to work at the top of my ability. So um, that means pushing the boundaries for me. And that gives me the, uh, the knowledge and the experience so I can teach videos like this to people who otherwise wouldn't know anything about or how to um, bypass ob obstacles. Another reason why I would do this on one side, like this, if I'm facing straight on, is if this window was a flat laying seal window and it's a hot day, I've got to come down flush because uh, coming down flush on a flat seal is quite important. And now I just focus on this side and I go very softly and gently against that edge because I don't want this rubber to go over the edge. So I just take my time, take it nice and slow, make no lines, no, make no smudges and get the job done at 100%. So I am about efficiency and getting the job done as quick as I can, but there are times where I'm restricted and I um, have to, you know, really concentrate and focus on uh, working 100%, and that that slows you down. But the the harder situations you work in, the uh, the more skillful you become. So, there's only one person teaching you these these techniques because there's only one person who can do these techniques or know uh, as much in-depth knowledge about how to do these things. Um, 
this is advanced pole work so I'm not talking about just general pole work and I'm working on a very strict window at the moment this is narrow so we've done the uh, the restriction parts of uh, angles and the um, flat lane seals you have to slow down on flat lane seals if you want 100% results so this squeegee is nearly as wide as the uh, window and uh, that's now restricted me uh, in movement but uh, I can still get the job done because I've got the skill and the ability and I've got the soaps solution correct but it's a lot harder to do so I wouldn't recommend um, especially for, uh, a beginner or someone who's not too hot on pole work um, go with the smallest squeeze you can so you've got the maneuverability but let's make a mistake so I'm gonna I've cut this out here and what I would do is come back up over come back down I make another mistake and now getting in dangerous territory because I'm right at the bottom of the window but uh, just about managed to get it done so the rule of thumb is use a squeegee that is well that's as wide as you want it on a narrow window anything up to here you've got the maneuverability anything longer like this then uh, you're going to struggle and I always advise um, for beginners to always start with smaller channels anyway because if you can uh, you, you can actually fix your mistakes and go back over because you got the you got the travel whereas a big squeegee doesn't give you the travel and an experienced window cleaner who's now going into liquidators you still go with the smaller squeegees because these liquidators they're a different fish to what you're used to using and you just have to really uh, focus and change the way you work many, many different things you need to change so if you make a mistake you can go back over if you're starting off with an 18 inch don't expect to be able to get decent results um, and the idea is to get 100% results with these all the time so I think I've covered enough on very narrow windows um, my next video will be on a uh, wide window like this